dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's with his dance floor and he thinks the world is all over. fans, Nets Boy here, bring your latest and your Brooklyn Nets news. Uh, so before I get into my video today, uh, just got to take care of a few things, talk about a couple things. Uh, first thing, um, though it's kind of irrelevant, changing up the Nets hat, as you can see. This is a uh, more of a, I don't want to say vintage, because real vintage would be ABA Nets, but you know, this is an older New Jersey Nets hat that I actually just found in my closet. So I said, you know what? The Nets have been playing like crap lately. Maybe we'll change things up and we'll go to this really, you know, sitting in the back of my closet Nets hat that I honestly don't remember ever getting. So, uh, but yeah, so I said, no, well, you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. Maybe that'll help the Nets, you know, win some games. It's better than anything else I else that they can do right now. Um, so that's the first thing that, you know, not that anyone cares. So new, new, different Nets hat. Um, the second thing is there actually is some Nets news, and it's not very good. Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson uh, apparently has to have ankle surgery and will be out indefinitely. And this is a terrible blow to the Nets. Apparently he hurt his ankle in a practice, and um, you know it turns out he broke a bone somewhere in the ankle. I don't remember exactly where. I didn't read the article in that much detail. But uh, he's out. He's out indefinitely. He's got surgery. They don't know how long. And it, it's a huge blow because, look, Rondé Hollis Jefferson is probably the most consistent defensive player the Nets have. He's played very well this year as a rookie and, and, and has been a very one of the more bright spots for the Nets this, so far this year. And now he's out, and who knows what's going to happen with this team. And this team is still, in my opinion, on the cusp of becoming maybe de decent, but they're 5-15, and 15, I think, and they're just, they're just bad. But anyway, that being said, I'm going today... Uh, to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, if you remember my last video, I talked about all the terrible moves, well, the, the big terrible trades that the Nets have made, and, and, well, that's what this video actually is. This video is my top five worst trades the Nets have made the last 10 years. Now, I've been a Nets fan for over 15 years, so uh, I, I really wanted to keep it to when I was actually a Nets fan following this team closely. So, this is, in my opinion... The last 10 years, and man, the Nets have made some really bad trades. I've ranked my top ten, five worst trades that the Nets have made the last 10 years. So let's dive right in, and here we go with my honorable mention of one of the worst trades the Nets have done in the last 10 years. And that is when the Nets traded Courtney Lee for Troy Murphy. Now, this was a multiple team deal that other pieces were involved, but that was the primary thing that the Nets did. Um, but this isn't a terrible trade because Courtney Lee really wasn't that great. I mean, he was okay, uh, but it's a, that's why it's only an honorable mention because it kind of didn't really impact the Nets too much. But Troy Murphy was completely useless for the Nets. You know, everyone thought that Troy Murphy was going to be this great, you know, eight, you know, 18 and like 10 player. And, you know, stretched the floor out it was for Brooke Lopez. And he just never was healthy. He constantly got hurt. And then when he did play, he was completely useless. So it's an honorable mention because it's not that big of a deal. You know, Courtney Lee was was okay with the Nets and, and, and so on and so forth. But just they basically traded away an okay player for someone who was completely useless. And that's why it's an honorable mention because, I mean, it didn't impact the franchise enough where you say, like, that's a terrible trade, but – Straight up value-wise, it really just was one of those classic little small moves that the Nets made that just really didn't work out. And that's why I have it as my honorable mention. Uh, my number five worst trade that the Nets have made in the last 10 years was when the Nets traded Richard Jefferson for Bobby Simmons and E. Gian Leon. Now, Richard Jefferson had just come off one of his best years. Actually, his, yes, his best year of his career. I averaged, I think, tw almost 24 points a game or something like that. He, uh, you know, benefited from just running into players, getting fouled, and making free throws. That's basically what Richard Jefferson did for, you know, like, his whole career. Um, but he did it really well that one year, and he was the lead scorer for the Nets, even though Vince Carter was the best player on that team. You know, he was the lead scorer with, tw like, 23 points per game or something like that. And the Nets were in the process of trying to rebuild 
and the first move was trading Richard Jefferson. Four, when you look at this trade initially for Bobby Simmons and Nijian Leon, now Bobby Simmons just had a year where he averaged like 14 points a game prior to it. So you're saying, okay, you're getting a decent replacement. And Nijian Leon was very, 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 you know, coveted by teams. They thought that this guy was going to be the next, you know, Yao Ming-like player, the next fantastic, you know, player. And his abilities, his, 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 his talent, his, his potential was through the roof. E. John Leon, you know, he was seven feet tall. He could hit the three ball. He was very athletic. And they thought that he would be a perfect complimentary player with Brooke Lopez. And as we, turn, as we all know, as it turns out, E. John Leon never really could figure out how to play in the NBA. He was one of the most frustrating players to ever watch play. Bobby Simmons became completely useless. I think he ended up becoming a bench player. And when you just look back at it, you say, wow, we, the Nets traded away their lead scorer. And a very good player in Richard Jefferson for basically two useless players. But this is number five only because of the fact that at the initial trade, you kind of felt good about yourself if you were the Nets. Because you there, you really thought E. Gian Leon had the potential to be a 20 and, and 7 player and could play alongside Brooke Lopez. So at, at first, it looked like a good trade. It just didn't work out for the Nets. Which really, most of these trades, when you think about it, it just didn't work out for the Nets, you know. No one's ever intentionally making a bad trade. It's just things just don't work out. But that's why it's number five because, you know what, it looked good at first and, you know, the Nets were trying to get worse. It wasn't like the Nets were trying to get true great value for Jefferson. They wanted to get a good young player, which they did in E.G. on Leon. And Bobby Simmons, who should have been adequate, it's just both those players were absolutely terrible. So that's number five. Now my number four, worst trade that the Nets made in the last 10 years. This one is more personal because it involves my favorite player. Vince Carter and Ryan Anderson for Courtney Lee, Rayford Alston, and Tony Batie. Now, like I said, this is a more a little bit more personal because Vince Carter is my favorite player of all time. Um, and, you know, he still is my favorite player. And so for when the Nets traded Vince Carter, I was crushed. I was very upset. I knew it was going to happen. You know, the Nets were really in tank mode and they were trying to get rid of all their big contracts and get some young players and picks and Vince Carter's deal obviously was had to go and I knew it was going to happen and I prepped myself for it, but it still hurt when it happened. But then when you look back at this trade, what the hell? This was a terrible trade. Vince Carter was the Nets' best player. He was at 20 points per game. Yes, he was 31. He was going on the down year of the career. Ryan Anderson was coming off a very solid rookie year. You know, he was good friends with Brooke Lopez. And they, tr why was he included? And what did the Nets get? Courtney Lee, who was an okay player. Ray for Olsen, who I don't even think finished the year with the Nets that year. And Tony Batie, a third string or a center? A 12th? Like, what? Where's the draft pick? How can you possibly trade your best player on your team for who averaged 20 points per game and a young player and not get at least a first-round draft pick? I mean, it would have been a big draft pick. It would have been from the Magic. So it would have been like the 25th round pick. Wait, what? Not 25th round, but 25th overall pick. Like, how do you not get a pick in that deal? The one player that's of any use in that trade was Courtney Lee, and he's just an eh player. That is terrible. I mean, if you get Vince Carter for Courtney Lee, Rafer Austin, and Tony Petit, I can kind of justify it because you're getting rid of a contract, you're getting rid of an older player, getting a young player. But why'd you include Ryan Anderson? Look at Ryan Anderson's career. I know Ryan Anderson constantly gets hurt, but when he's healthy, he's fantastic. And you know what? He would have been a great partner with Brooke Lopez for years to come. I know Thaddeus Young is good now, but I mean, that's just a terrible trade. If you just look at the overall value that the Nets were given up, I don't know what was happening. Now, that was a Rod Thorne trade, and I, look, everyone loves Rod Thorne. Personally, the moves he made, to me, made the Nets crap. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the year that they made that trade, I want people to note this, they trade Vince Carter, trade Ryan Anderson. That team, I think, won 35 games. The next year, when those guys got traded, and they wrote in Ray for Austin, Courtney Lee, Tony Petit, that was the year the Nets won 11 games. Coincidence? I don't think so. You trade away your best player and a good young player who's on the, has the upside for three completely useless players, you're going to win 11 games. 
But that was the plan for the Nets. Remember that. They wanted to get bad. So I guess if you look at it, you're like, that's a good trade. But in my opinion, the fact that you didn't get at least one draft pick and the fact that you included Ryan Anderson as well, terrible trade. Really, I wish that trade was a little bit higher. But the objective for the Nets in that trade was not to get true great value for your players. It was just to get out of Vince Carter's contract. But still, that's, that's just a bad trade. I mean, come on. Now that brings me to my number three uh, worst trade. Um, Nets traded Mehmet Okur. 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 Remember that he was on the Nets? I know. I barely remember it, too. Uh, and Sean Williams and a 2012 projected pick. For Gerald Wallace. Now, this trade, when it first happened, looked great for the Nets. And I agree. And, you know, Mehmet Okur, Okur, whatever the heck his name is, he was beyond useless for the Nets. I don't, you know, I don't even know why. You talk about somebody, you know, he was probably more useless than Troy Murphy. You know, and Sean Williams was okay, you know, whatever. And you're just giving up a first-round draft pick. You're saying, okay, but it was protected still. I think it was top three protected, so you're like, all right, the Nets are still getting something good. And they got Gerald Wallace in the trade. Now, at the time, Gerald Wallace was a very good player. And let's be honest, the first year that Gerald Wallace was with the Nets, Nets fans loved him. I loved him. Everyone loved him. He was a great player, great energy guy. To me, he was a perfect complimentary small forward to what the Nets were building. You know, the Nets were on their way up trying to create that team. And remember, he was a key piece to the Nets season where they won 49 games. Uh, and you know, so when you first looked at that trade, you said, that's a great trade. But the reason why it's my number three worst trade is because of what that draft pick became. And even though it was protected, it still became the trailblazers draft pick. And I've mentioned this before that 2012 protected draft pick ended up becoming Damian Lillard. So if you want to rephrase this, the Nets traded away Mehmet Okur, Sean Williams, and Damian Lillard for Gerald Wallace. Wow. Now, look, you can't quite say that the Nets would have drafted Damian Lillard if they kept that pick. Knowing them, they wouldn't have. Uh, but still, when you overall look objectively at what the value got for the players, that's a terrible trade. Now, like I said, it's hard to get on that trade because initially it looked like a very good trade and you had no idea that Damian Lillard was going to become what he became. And you had no idea who was going to go at the 2012, you know, whatever round pick that was. And I'm not sure of the number pick. I think it was around like 11 or 12 or something like that. Maybe even a little bit higher. I'm not even sure what round pick Damian Lillard was, but when you just look at it, the Nets could have had Damian Lillard. I mean, that's the way I look at it. All right. Once again, there's no guarantee the Nets would have drafted Damian Lillard with that pick anyway if they kept it, but that's the way I look at it. The Nets could have had Damian Lillard, and that would have been a whole different story. That's why that's the number three worst trade the Nets have made in the last 10 years, simply because if the Nets had Damian Lillard with Brook Lopez, oh my God, I don't even want to think about how good of a team the Nets could actually be. But, you know, it's number three because, you know, you would have never really expected that when you first made the trade and it was not a bad trade at the time let's be honest you know it helped the nets significantly now that brings me to my number two worst trade uh the nets have made in the last 10 years and this is oh this is a good one Derek favors devin harris and two first round picks for good old darren williams oh my oh my um I think now we all can understand why this is a terrible trade. Derek Favors, by the way, has really come into his own. He's a really good, solid, you know, 17 and 10 player. You know, very good rebounder, defensive player. He's really finding a good niche in Utah. And it's kind of interesting of, of what could have happened if he stayed with the Nets. But, you know, Devin Harris, by the way, was coming off one of his better seasons when the Nets traded him. The Nets do like to do that. Um, well, that's no, not true. No, no, not that year. He was he didn't have that best of a year, and his time was kind of up. People were getting frustrated with him. And then two first uh, round draft picks. I know one became Ennis Cantor, and I'm not sure what the other draft pick became. I think it became Alec Burke. Alec Burke, I think, who's a very good two guard, uh, two guard for for the Jazz. I think those are the two picks that they be, that that became. But I mean, you gave up two draft picks, 
and a young, talented player in Derek Favors, and a good quality point guard for Darren, the piece of crap Williams. And look, once again, I was excited. I'm like, Darren Williams going to the Nets. He's going to be great with Brooklyn. Darren Williams, honestly, was not that bad his first few years with the Nets. I think the expectations were a little unrealistic. But when you just overall look at what how everything transpired, and, you know, we had a, the Nets buy, had to buy him out, and how he just became a shell of who he once was, that ended up being a terrible trade. Um, I mean, it's just bad. You know, you're trading for Darren Williams, who was supposed to be your franchise player, and he never quite lived up to the hype. And that's why this is the number two worst, you know, trade that the Nets have made in the last 10 years because you gave up a lot. This is a lot, you know. To give up two first-round draft picks and a good young player in Derek Favors and a quality starter in Devin Harris for a guy who ended up being nothing more than an 18 and an 8 player, which is good, but never quite living up to the hype of the franchise player, it's a bad trade. It's a bad trade. And especially how everything played out with him later on. Couldn't stay healthy. Because he had ankles issues. Complained about the backdrop of the Prudential Center. That was my favorite. Or, you know, I think our struggle here in New Jersey because of the backdrop of the Prudential Center. Are you serious? Most of these people used to play in, uh, in, on, on street ball with no nets and, 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 and buildings as their backdrop. God, I hated Darren Williams. God, I'm so glad he's not on the nets. So, you know, uh, that's the number two worst trade the Nets have made in the last 10 years. Just just bad. Which brings me to my number one worst trade the Nets have made in the last 10 years. And it ain't no shock. Uh, number one, Nets trade, Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, Marshawn Brooks. Uh, uh, Chris Joseph, Keith Bogans, three first round draft picks and a 2017 swap for Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Jason Terry. Is it any surprise that this trade is my number one worst trade in the last 10 years? Wow. Wow. Just wow. When I actually break down this trade, and look, originally, like every Net fan, and trust me, there's not one Net fan who did not love this trade when it first happened. Initially, I was like, woo! Look at the Nets. They got Garnett. They got Pierce. Terry's going to come off the bench. This team's going to be great. They're going to have Lopez, Joe Johnson, Darren Williams. This is a great trade. <laughs> come on. We all said it. We all said it. Every Nets fan said it. And if you were an F fan who didn't say it, you were a little stupid. And I, well, maybe, maybe refer, take that back. You weren't stupid, but... You know, every Nets fan wanted the Nets to take their game to the next level. And this trade looked like it was going to happen. But when you look at what the Nets truly gave up, Joe Wallace, quality quality starting small forward. Chris Humphreys, he had an inconsistent year with the Nets that year. Marshawn Brooks, who, Marshawn Brooks to me should still be in the NBA. He's not. To me, he's a quality six-man scorer. You know, you know, Chris Joseph, useless player. Keith Bogans used to play but three first round draft picks and to swap 2017's pick i mean that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and look at what happened paul pierce left after one year case and terry got traded uh after one and a half years kevin garnett got traded last year for for thaddeus young which was a good trade that was a good trade one of the few they made and what do the nets have left they have no draft picks they haven't, you know, the the, the next they don't have a draft pick next this coming season, next year, 2016, which is a big deal because we know how bad the Nets have been this year. And then when they do have a draft pick next 2017, they can swap it with the with the uh, Celtics. Celtics can swap it. Like, what 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 does this what the Nets have nothing to show from this trade net except for if you want to argue Thaddeus Young is something that the Nets got from this trade that's the only thing that came off of the, from this trade because even when they traded jason terry they traded for marcus thornton who didn't even no longer on the team either so when you look back at this trade that just happened two years ago you look back at this trade that happened two or two years ago the only thing that's have left for it is thaddeus young so if you want to look at this in a more distant future type of look you traded Jared wallace chris humphreys marshawn brooks chris joseph keith bogans three first round draft picks and a 2017 swap 
for Thaddeus Young. Why are there so many picks involved with this trade for a closed deal? That's the other thing that makes no sense now. The Nets weren't competing with anybody. Like, this would be understandable if, like, four other teams were calling about trying to make the trade for Garnett and, and Paul Pierce and saying, hey, yeah, we, you know, we got to give up this, this, this. The Nets were competing with themselves. They, like, said, whoa, geez, you know, we're the only team interested in these players. So, so let's just give them three draft picks and a fourth one to swap. What? 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 Okay, here's a more reasonable trade that should have happened. Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, and Keith Bogans, because they had to sign Bogans for the trade, you know, for the deal overall. And maybe two draft picks. Boom. That would have been, to me, just as fair of a trade. Two first-round draft picks, Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, and, the, and Keith Bogans for the contract situation. For two and two first-round draft picks for those three players. That would have been a much more fair trade. The Nets would still have one more draft, would still have two more draft picks. So they would have held on to Marshawn Brooks, who I still thought had a lot of upside. Okay, maybe you can throw Chris uh, Joseph in. He's irrelevant in the trades. Okay, Joe Walsh, Chris Humphreys, Chris Joseph, Keith Bogans, and two draft picks for those three players. That would have been a fair trade. That would have been a good trade, and that's something I think the Nets could have lived with. But now, no. No, I mean, it's just it's just terrible. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that that ended up being one of the worst trades the Nets have ever made. It's why they're stuck in the situation that they're, that they're in now. And there's nothing really the Nets can do moving forward with, with any of that. Like I said, they ultimately traded all those guys for Thaddeus Young when it's all said and done. And it's just it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, you know, you know, I, you know, when you look back at all these trades, to me, they're the, they're the reason why the Nets are as crappy as they are now. Every single one of those trades were just absolutely terrible. And it, it, let me tell you something. It seemed like in the last 10 years, the Nets have made more bad trades than good trades. That's just the way it seems. Uh, it's, 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 it's been ridiculous. Um, and so on and so forth. And so there you have it. Tell me what you think. Tell me if there's any other trades that happened in the last 10 years that you think should be on my countdown or my list of the worst trades the Nets have made in the last 10 years. I mean... When you see about how many bad moves they made, it, it doesn't shock you that the Nets are in the state that they're in. It's what makes being a Nets fan so frustrating sometimes. But anyway, let me know what you think, and keep your eyes open for the next Nets Boy episode. Hopefully the Nets can get on track and start winning some damn games. They're 5-15. and 15. That's terrible. Anyway, until the next episode, this is Nets Boy with that new hat that's hopefully going to change how the, you know, the Nets' fortunes. And signing off.